let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for being willing to be nailed to the cross for me. For everyone here, for everyone who's not here, for everyone over the ages, you chose the nails. Thank you. What more can we say for your willingness? Remind us, O oh God, that the nails were tough, but you were the greatest nail of all. You nailed it, Jesus, for us. Grant us your presence and your grace. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we might find ourselves connected and nailed to you. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone. For you are our Redeemer, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. And amen. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ who was, who is, and who will always be. I saw a cartoon on Facebook, it was put out by some Lutheran pastors. And the pastor was sitting at the head of the table and the council was at the far end of the table. And there was all this space. And the pastor said, I'm wondering if you can help me figure out a way to get people towards the front of the church. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> but we have a few towards the front today. It's a wonderful thing, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. But I think it's really important we can key in on that latter part of the verse. However, we need to remember that first part. God demonstrate his, demonstrates his own love for us in this. This week, the theme is the nails. If you hadn't figured that out, he was nailed to the cross for us. Whether it's tonight or today or on Wednesday evening, that's the theme. You nailed it, right? It's an expression we all have heard. You nailed it. It means you got it right. You were on the right track. It was hit in the right way. You were successful. It was skilled. It was clever competition. And the performance was one that something, something important took place. You nailed it. And really, in essence, that's exactly what Jesus did. It's not so much that he was nailed to the cross, which he was, but he chose that. He becomes the nail for us. And over this week, you'll see things that remind you in your devotional of the things that were truly nailed to the cross. Or the things he nailed down for us. For example, God's faithfulness. And what's said in the beginning of this verse for the week, he demonstrates his what? Love. He demonstrates his what? Love, Love for us in this. Nails are interesting. So I took a look at nails. There's all kinds of nails. I'm not a carpenter. I don't build things. I watched my dad build things. And I know he had all kinds of baby jars in the garage. He had this, this uh, wooden, well, it was a piece of wood. And then he had all the lids of the baby jars. And then under those, he could screw 
the nails up there so he could just unscrew them and take the nails out. I don't know. I'm sure Marv did something similar to that. But he had all these jars above his workbench. And they were all different kinds of nails and they were different sizes. So the baby jar was dictated or the nails were dictated by my sister's baby food. If it was the tall jar, the bigger nails went in that. If it was a small one, the smaller nails went in that. And then he had the drawers. And my dad, unlike my office, my dad's work area was perfection. He was an old German and everything had to be in place. But I did know this, there were different nails for different things. And there's different parts to a nail. You can go ahead and put the picture up on there. I don't know how well you can see it, but that's only eight different types of nails. There are typically over 29 different types of nails that are commonly used. And I say commonly because there are other nails that aren't common. Up there, you have uh, the longer nails, you have those that look like screws, you have the flat tip, the roofing nail, you have the masonry nail. There's all kinds of nails up there. And each one of them has three parts to it. The nail point, it's either that diamond point, that real exact point. And it's there to help minimize the splitting of the wood or the joining together. It's easier to drive in. Or maybe it's a blunt point. Uh, maybe less likely to split the wood. And then there are the nail heads. You know the top where you get it? On the nail heads, there are round heads for general purposes and fastening. There's flat heads, large, relatively large, easier to reduce the risk of the workpiece pulling through the head. They're checkered ones to prevent the hammer from slipping. I never used one of those when my dad would say, okay, beat this nail, beat this nail. He, he put us out there, he put a piece of wood and we had to hit it. I learned quick to remove my hand. There's countersink and cupped heads. There's clipped heads, they're D-shaped. And then you have the shaft. Is it smooth, which is easy to drive in? Is it a spiral, which means it will hold four harder? Is it a ring shape? Who knows? So you have the pieces of the nail and then you have the types. The common nail, the one everybody uses. You'd all recognize it. Then there's the box nails, the braid nails, the finishing nails, the drywall nails, the flooring nails, oh my goodness, the framing nails, the roofing nails, the masonry nails, and there are plenty more, and I could stand up here and read what each one of them do, and I'm not going to do that. You just get bored. But what I want us all to understand is the nails are important because Different nails are used for different things, and yet there was one nail, one type of nail, one type of nail that held Jesus to the cross, and it wasn't the one that they drove into his hands. He could have pulled himself off the cross, right? What did the people say? If you are the Son of God, come down off the cross. He could have if he wanted to, but he chose to be the nail for you and me. Perplexing, isn't it? He's the one that solidifies things, that puts things together. That's why I'm calling him the nail. He's the one who could nail the law down. But over the law, he places his love and the good news that you have life forever, not based on what you do,
but based on what he has done. Maybe we could call him the masonry nail. The masonry nail can go through anything. The hardest of stone, that which seems to be unpenetrable, that which seems to not be broken. Or maybe we can just say he is the nail of faithfulness. He shows us the faithfulness of God. That which was promised in the past has now come to fruition. Now that which is of the past is now fully ours. That which was promised long ago. Or maybe, just maybe, we can call him the one who covers us with his blood. And in baptism washes you clean and me clean. And reminds us that he washes away the sin that we experience day in and day out. Maybe that's the common nail that he is goes to everyone. There is no difference. It says in the scriptures that all have fallen short of the glory of God, but thanks be to Christ Jesus our Lord, who became the sacrifice for our sins, who nails it down for you and for me. He is the one who shows God's love for the world, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. Words that we all know by heart, those of us in the church. Words that we memorized early on as children. <coughs> he nailed it. Isn't it nice to know that Jesus put to rest sin, death, and the power of the devil? Those are Luther's words, by the way. But important for us to recognize that what happens on the cross overcomes our sin. What happens on the cross overcomes our death, and what happens on the cross puts to rest the devil. Sometimes we don't talk about the devil enough. We don't want to give him credit. So in our church, we only name him when we name the fact that God nailed everything over him so he would have no more power over you. What a gift we can give him. During this week, think of all those things that you feel have separated you from Christ or from others. And know that in him, it's been covered up and nailed down so that that cannot rise up to separate you for eternity. Rest in him. And let us pray. Oh God, as Thomas wanted to see the marks in your hands, remind us that they were there. But the greatest mark of all is that you were on the cross for us. Help us to see and to believe, to walk in that truth, and to share that hope with someone else. This we ask in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we...